Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating automating content migration with Kapow Catalyst. This is the Kapow Extraction Browser. The Extraction Browser allows us to interact with and extract content from the website. We can extract visual components from the website, such as images or text, along with non-visual values such as metadata from the HTML or properties from the browser such as the URL. The content of interest is selected visually and mapped into a structured data object with attributes that you define. This is an overview of Kapow's content migration process. The content is extracted directly from the website or other sources with Kapow robots and stored into an intermediate database. Here, the content can be formatted, categorized, and transformed to meet the taxonomy of the target CMS. The content can be uploaded as XML by way of Rust Web Services, SOAP Web Services, Sling Forms, or whatever custom API or standards-based API is provided by the CMS. Content can also be uploaded into the CMS without using an API at all, simply by loading the CMS's website into Kapow's Extraction Browser and mapping the content into the CMS through the UI. These are the steps to Kapow's content migration process. First, a database inventory of all the URLs that make up the site will be created. A robot will crawl the website and collect all the URLs of all the HTML pages, along with the URLs of all of the resources, including images and other binary files. Next, we access each item from the inventory database table. The resource files are saved off to the local hard drive, and the HTML is parsed through to extract the content as structured data objects. We then enrich and transform the content as needed before uploading it to the target CMS. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the Extraction Browser, which we've loaded our sample website into with the first step of our robot here that you can see up above. I can create additional steps in the robot simply by interacting with the content in the Extraction Browser. For example, I'll recreate the next step in the robot, the for each URL step. I'll simply select this step, delete it from the robot, and then recreate that step by selecting the site, expanding the scope to the entire page, right-clicking on the page, selecting the type of step that I want to add. I want to add a loop, a for each URL, and as I click on this, the step is added back into the robot above. I can now click on the for each URL step and watch the robot step through the site URL by URL. The next step in the robot will actually extract the value that we have selected on the page. So for example, you can see currently we have this text selected and the HTML down below, you can see the href value is faasafety.gov forward slash some content. So this step, extract URL, which is configured here, is going to extract that text value and store it into the inventory.url attribute. So as I click past that step, in real time, we can verify that the URL value has been populated here. The next step in the inventory robot is the isInDomain logical step. This step checks if the current URL is within the domain that we're doing an inventory of and as you can see visually here, this content is from the faasafety.gov website. It does not belong to the aopao.com site. So when I try to pass this step, Kapow Catalyst is going to let me know that we can't reach the next step because we did not pass that logical test. So we'll go to the next element in the loop, and that value is extracted into the URL attribute. The value is aopao.com forward slash some content, and that does contain aopao. So we pass that logical test and move on to the next three tests. The next three steps in the robot check if the current href that we have selected is one of these CMS generated buttons. If it is, we don't want to add the URL to our inventory. In this case, it's not, so we can pass by these tests and continue to the next step where we get the content type of the query URL, which happens to be an HTML page. So that content type is going to be set down here in our inventory object when I pass the step. Now we have the content type and the URL in our inventory object. We can now try to load the page and verify that it's a valid link. Now that we've verified that the link is valid, we verified that the URL belongs to the domain, it's not a CMS generated button, we can finally store it into our inventory database. Once we've run through this step by step for a single page and verified that the workflow and the robot works as we want it to, we can then switch to debug mode and run the robot and watch the content extracted from the pages, each URL and each content type, page by page, just as it would at runtime. This is the first of two extraction robots. 
This one's fairly simple. There's no visual component. We're simply going to query the inventory database that we just created and find all of the URLs for the resource files, such as the PDF files, JPEGs, etc. We're going to save all those files to the local hard drive and then store the location back in our database table. I'll switch to debug mode now and run the robot and here we can see each URL, each file name, and each file size as it's saved off to the local hard drive and the file location is stored back to our database. The second extraction robot goes back to the inventory database and this time we're going to query for all of the HTML content. After the page is loaded, I'm going to select the main menu to determine the category of the content on this page. This is done with the find tag step. Here is where the find tag step is defined. We're going to look for active item within the tag. Here in the HTML below, you can see that the first item of the main menu is designated as the active item. When I click past this step, that menu item is found. When I click past that, we extract the text and store it as our category over here in our HTML content object. In the next step, we define an area within the page as an article. We're going to have a loop that goes through every article on the page and it finds the title of the article. And that's mapped into our content object down here when I pass the step. And the next attribute is the subtitle. That's mapped into the content object. And then the article date. And as you notice, the article date that was mapped into our object here is in a different format than you see here in the article. That's done with this converter. This is one of many converters provided in Kapow Catalyst. This particular converter does a pattern match on the date and converts it into the format that we want. There's also converters for other types of arithmetic functions and other text converters available. The next step extracts the author and then we extract the content of the article. And now that we've fully populated our content object, we're ready to store that object into the database. So we've gone through the robot step by step for one article on one page. This is exactly how you design a robot. You load one page that you know has a similar layout to many other pages. You select the content on the page, define it, and map it into your object, and then create the business rules to transform the content and format it exactly how you want to see it and store it in your database. Now we're going to run this in debug mode and allow the robot to run through all of the articles on the first page. When it gets to the final article, It'll load the next page, load all the articles on the next page, and if we have any issues with the layout on other pages, the debugger will let us know. I'll hit play, it runs through to the 16th article and stops us at extract subtitle. Here, I simply hit the go to button in the debugger. That brings us back to the Visual Design Studio where we can see that the 16th article doesn't have a subtitle. So this is the problem that we've hit and we can simply solve this by changing our robot now we can add a branch to the robot where we handle this case in a different way or we can set a default value for the subtitle or we can simply handle it with error handling say ignore and continue if it's not a required field now that we've made this quick change we can go back to the debugger and run it again this time we go past the 16th article and we're going through all the pages we're on the 14th, 15th, and 16th page it's this rapid, iterative design process that allows you to continuously fine-tune your robot until you can extract all the content from all the pages as you visually verify that the content is formatted and structured to match the content model in your target CMS. Now we're going to map our content and resource files into the XML structure that can be consumed by WCI as an RSS feed. We begin by creating the open tags for the RSS feed and the XML. We get the current date and we set that into the last build date tag. We then go to our database of resource file names. We get the first file name from our resource database and then we assign a GUID to that file. Here you can see the WCM template for each one of our components. We'll set the title, the description, the target ID will be the GUID, the file name, and then we'll populate this template for each of the resource file names that we have in our resource database. So after we create the GUID for that item, an assign attribute step is then used to populate these values into the template. The first converter gets the component template attribute. The subsequent converters replace each of the fields in the template with the value from the database. The resulting value is stored into the component populated attribute. We set the GUID back into the database this item is added to our XML file and we go back to the database we get the next resource file name 
and add that XML item to the XML file as well. We continue through this process for each one of the resource files in the resource database until we get to the last file and the robot will then take this path it will then add the RSS feed and XML close tags to the file and then save the file to the hard drive. We'll go to debug mode now and run the robot and as the robot runs we can see a target ID GUID assigned to each item as it's added to the XML file and the final file is saved to the hard drive. And here's the resulting RSS feed XML file, the XML headers and RSS feed headers followed by an item for each of the files. This final robot creates an RSS feed XML file of the article content in the same way that the prior robot created an RSS feed XML file. The XML file content is begun with the open tags of the XML and the RSS feed. We then query our database of articles. When I pass by this step, the first article populates our HTML content object. We can then take that object, add a GUID, and then populate it into the template for the item. Here we can see the fields that will be populated by the converters in the assign attribute step. As we pass this step, each of these converters will be executed. We'll get that template that we just looked at, and then each of those variables will be replaced in the template, and the result will be stored into the item populated attribute. This XML item is appended to the XML file. The query database loop step continuously gets the next article, and these steps are repeated for each article, and the XML is added to the collective XML file until all the articles have been added. When we reach the final article, we'll add the RSS and XML close tags to the file and then write the file to the hard drive. Let's go to debug mode now and run the robot. Here we can see very quickly all of the articles are added to the XML file. Here's the resulting XML file. We can see the XML and the RSS feed headers followed by each item for each article and the actual content of each of those articles. If you have any questions or you'd like to see a more in-depth content migration demonstration, please use the information below to contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software. Thank you.